Mila daf nun zayin. Says the Mishnah, any kesa mustain that's found in a Jewish city is tar because we assume that Jewish women they hide their ksamim. However, if you found it within a room, that's where Jewish women hide it, and memela it's tamei. The same thing applies if you find it in a base of tumais, which is like a hotel where nidas go during the nida in order not to be metama their food at home. You can assume that whatever you find there is tamei. Base of tumais of kusim doubles as a cemetery for their nefalim, for their miscarriages, and memela. It's metame ba'ayah. Rabbi Yudha says it's not true. Kusiyos do not bury their nefalim because they darsh in the pasuk v'sasik v'riecha she govlu rishonim nechlosecha that there's an iser to buy a grave from another family and if you do, you have to give it back to them if they want it. The kusim go one step further and they say nechlosecha only to a person who gets a nachl, who gets inheritance. Since a nefal doesn't get inheritance, they don't get buried. MML, they would just leave their nefalim for the animals to take. Kusim are not makbid on any of the rabbanons. Therefore, the Pasuk with me, you shouldn't put a stumbling block in front of a blind. They darshan it literally, but they don't darshan that you're not going to be machshal another person from Klai Yisrael. And therefore, when the Mishnah says that they are believed, a Kusi is believed to say that there's no grave here, why can't we believe him? The answer is because the Kusi himself is a Kayan and he's standing on the grave and he's eating truma, betuma, and therefore we know that there's no grave there because he's makbid on a Raisa. Of course, he's also believed to say that this particular animal already had a firstborn, and then Mela, this animal is part of Rambukhaira, only in a situation where you saw with your own eyes that he was doing Giza Ba'avayda, that he sheared the wool and he worked the animals, so Mela, there's no Chiv Bechaira. Akusi is also believed to say that he marked a grave or he didn't mark a grave, although it's not an Issa Dei Raisa, but it's mentioned, or a Chiv Dei Raisa, it's mentioned in the Navi by Mechemes Goyumagai that people are going to mark bones and graves, uvana However, when it comes to the Rabbanon, like schach and prais, meaning if somebody buried somebody below a tree or in a wall and is protruding, the kusi is not believed to say that he's buried here and not there because that's just the suffix and they're not makbid on tzveikos. A kusi is not believed about a base of pras, that's if they buried a body in a field and somebody plowed over the field, perhaps a fragment of the bone scattered somewhere in the field, Machloikis Tanakama says it's 100 amma by 100 amma, which is 4 saw. Rebbe says 112 amma by 112 amma, 5 saw. Akopanim, you see that that is certain, it's only Xerid Rabbanim because we allow a person to get down on all four and blow his way through the field. Or if people traverse through the field, we say also that there's no more fragments. In Memela, that shows us that it's the Rabbanim. If a Kusi, who's a Kayan, walked through the field eating truma, he walked the entire field, we could assume that there's no bodies buried there unless there's a little protrusion from the field and he didn't go there and he's not mocking on that so we can't rely on him. It says in the Mishnah, Zaklal, Zaklal always comes to include something that we don't know, it comes to include that we cannot trust the Kusi when it comes to Tchumim because Tchumim is the Rabbanon, we cannot trust the Kusi when it comes to Yain Nesach, the, the Rabbanon part of Yain Nesach, which is if a guy touched it, they're not mocking on it. it. says in the Mishnah, any stain that we find on the skin of a woman that's below the erva, and we could attribute to the erva, it makes her tummy. So the inner legs, thighs, feet are all tummy, the outer feet are tar. If it's on her heel or on her large toe, it's also tummy. If it's on her begadim, then it depends. If it's below chagura, says Rashi, a belt which is by the erva, so anything below that is tummy, anything above is tar. If a woman removes her sleeve and it can reach the erva, then it is tummy as well. If a woman removes her beggar at night and uses it as a cover, as a blanket, then anywhere on that beggar, even though when she wears it, it's above the belt, it's still matama, it's still tummy because at night everything moves around. The same halacha would apply to a shawl. The Gemara brings the famous halacha from Shmuel. Midaraisa anida is only if there's a hargasha, if there's a sensation. So Shmuel, if a woman checked the ground below her and saw that there's no dam, and she sat down and afterwards she got up and she finds dam, she's completely tired since she didn't have its sensations, she didn't have her gosha. So the Gemara asks, for, and it says, and he brings a pasuk, Bif Sara. She has to feel it within her bus, where the Gemara learns from there another two drushas, that a woman is tummy immediately once the dam leaves the womb, it doesn't have to come out of her guf. A woman is also not tummy if the dam was enclosed by some meat or some shilya, which creates like a chatzitza, so to speak, to her basar and male she's tar. The Gemara has four questions on Shmuel. The first one is that it says that if a woman was relieving herself and she finds dam in the Meiragline, 
Depends. If she was standing up, that shows us that it was so urgent that perhaps the Mary Glai went back into her goof, grabbed some nida, and came out Mamela, she's a nida. But if the Mary Glai came out naturally, in other words, she was sitting, so there's no reason for us to believe that it went back and grabbed nida. So the dam that she found is from a wound, and Mamela, she's tar. Question is, where's the sensation? Where's the Ayagasha? The answer is, and this will answer everything basically, that once there's another sensation involved, over here, the Mary Glai, that is confused with the other sensation of Nida. If a woman did a bdika, and instead of checking the cloth right away, perhaps it was dark, she put it under a pillow and she checked it the following morning. Allah is that if what she finds is a round circle, then she's tar, we could assume that it was from a kina. If it's an elongated dam, then she's tummy. The question again is, where's the hargasha? The answer is that the aid, the bdika cloth, created a certain hargasha, and she confused that with the hargasha of Nida. As we brought down in the beginning of the Masechda, the Tznuais would also check their husbands with a bdika. So if the husband finds dam on his bdika cloth, then it doesn't matter when he finds it, even much later on, he knows where it came from, and they're both tummy and they bring a carbon. If a woman finds it immediately, they're both tummy bring a carbon. If they find it later on, then it's only a suffer. The question is, what about our gosha? No mention of our gosha. The answer is, again, because she's with her husband, she confused that with the hargosha of Nida. And finally, the Gemara asks a question. It says that there are three sveikos. One of them is a suffolk, tummy suffolk tar on her skin. We pass him tummy. Suffolk tummy suffolk tar on her beged, tar. And a woman who doesn't have a vesis kavua, then it depends. We go by the roid. And the Gemara explains what that means. The Gemara is asking a question from the case of suffolk tummy suffolk tar on herself. Where's the hargosha? Why is she tummy? And in addition, our mission says that any dam that's found below the erva, she's tummy. Where's the hargosha? And the answer is that Shmuel admits that yes, midir raisa, you need hargosha, but these other cases are midir abanan, and without hargosha, she's also tummy. Have a wonderful day.